Let's take a look, closer look at demand paging and its comparison to caching. So demand paging first started off in uh, 1962, and here's an example. a system called Atlas, and it's my DM, um, and a page from secondary storage is bought into primary storage whenever uh, it is implicitly demanded by the processor. So primary memory is treated as a cache for secondary memory. So let's take a look at caching versus demand paging. So caching, uh, first of all, is something known as a cache entry, which is the size of the data structure or the, the smallest block uh, that's used for allocating space uh, in the cache itself. It's typically about 32 or 64 bytes. Uh, your cache miss rate is about 1 to 20%. Uh, hit performance and miss performance about comparable to uh, CPU clock cycles, and most importantly, a miss is handled entirely in hardware. Demand page, on the other hand, refers to page frames, much larger, four kilobytes, and these days moving things towards 32 kilobytes just to reduce the total number of page frames in the system and to improve space management. Um, you've got a page miss rates, which you typically you want to be very low because it's handled entirely in software and it's very slow um, because you've got to move things in disk and memory where disk is a lot slower than uh, memory. So the ratio of disk to memory performance is much lower than memory to cache performance. Okay. So disk typically runs about tens of milliseconds. And you know, memory is running at 100 cycles or so. Uh, one cycle is one milliseconds. So you're probably looking at 100 nanoseconds. Uh, 10 millisecond uh, difference, which is quite a lot. Uh, so I'm just one that's in, in Pascal. That's one. That's one is to 100 ratio these days, and one is to a freaking thousand, ten thousand, or something. Ten to the two, three, four, six. So we're getting close to ten to the five in terms of in terms of difference. And so the miss is handled mostly in software as well, and that's the other big thing. So there's a cost associated with that as well. Where the system needs to stop and then go and fetch things to the disk, and nothing else can be done in the meantime on the CPU. So, in the key principle behind VM is that it's directly related to the cost of a mix. So, everything is tuned towards the fact that. If there's a miss, or if the page is not in memory, it's going to cost you a lot to go get it from the disk, and hence you should try to minimize it. Okay, um, and page sizes should be large enough to cover the cost of a miss. So, if it's large enough, then the transfer time is much less than the access time itself. And four kilobytes, sixteen kilobytes is common. Like I said, newer systems go thirty-two to sixty-four. Um, and because of this, you don't worry so much about internal fragmentation within a page. You don't worry about if you allocate four kilobytes and the program only uses, for example, one kilobyte. You don't worry about that because if you had smaller pages, then the car, on every demand miss, if you bring only one page, then if you have an application that uses a lot of pages, then you're going to pay, be paying a huge uh, penalty for the page miss up. So reducing page fault rate as high priority, uh, it's fully associated in the sense that any page can reside anywhere in physical memory. You don't bind any process to specific physical memory regions in the system. Uh, it's write back uh, to minimize writes to the disk themselves. So when you update memory, you lazily move it to the disk as opposed to immediately updating the disk. Uh, and page faults are handled in software by the OS. Um, if the overhead of the OS operations themselves is small, it is large compared to a cache operation because that's done in hardware. But compared to the cost of moving the data from the slower disk, uh, the cost of handling the, the, the page fault itself is small. And you use a lot of clever different algorithms, you look at some of them, which maintain a lot of state to figure out which pages are important. Because the penalty for having an important page on disk by mistake would result in a page fault that's very expensive. So you take the hit, may you pay a lot of penalty for actually running these algorithms, uh, heavyweight algorithms, um, but uh, you save a lot of performance or you may ensure higher performance by 
making sure the important pages are always in memory. On a page fault, what you'd normally do is you allocate a free page in memory if it's available. If no free pages are available, then you invoke the replacement policy. Uh, this is what we'll focus on in the next segment. When we run out of memory, which page do we kick out of memory? How do we know which page is important and which page is not? And the replace page is first written to the disk. Uh, the page table is then updated. The entry of the pair replace page is marked as invalid. And then the entry of the new page is filled in. Right? So it's a three step process. First, you, you let's say this is memory and this is disk. First, you kick out the old page for the replacement candidate. Uh, you mark, uh, update the page table entry, then you copy the new page, and then you update the page table entry of the new page. Alright? One of the key things is that the OS must reserve swap space on the disk for each process. Uh, a player just put out the swap pages and you could obviously get a, have the choice of allocating the whole disk as swap space. So this would be bad because the way you're going to store your files. So to grow a process, all you got to do is ping the OS and ask it for more memory. Uh, if unused pages are available in memory, then the OS uses them first. Uh, if not, the OS swaps from all pages to the disk. One of the key challenges with the demand page in general is the impact of the TLB itself, or keeping track of uh, whether the page was written, um, because you don't want to write back every single page to the disk because it's slow. So what we do in this case is use a dirty bit in the page. When the first uh, write happens to a page, or any write happens to a page, this bit is set. Uh, when the TLB entry is replaced, the corresponding bit is set in the page table entry. And this helps you um, essentially ma maintain the fact that if, the, if a page is dirty, then you, you look up and then you do a corresponding write back. Thank you.